Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu about plagues. She asked the Prophet about plagues. And the Prophet sallallahu said that plagues are a punishment that Allah sends to whomever He pleases. And Allah has made it a means of mercy for the believers. It is a punishment to some and a mercy for the others who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That no one stays at a place of plague and expects Allah to reward him and knows that nothing will happen except what Allah has decreed, except that he shall get the reward of a shaheed. This is in Sahih Bukhari. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Hadith is mutafaq alayhi, Bukhari and Muslim, the plague is considered a shahada for every believer. So the plague is a mechanism for shahada. And also in Sahih Bukhari, the famous incident that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an was on his way to Syria. And Abu Ubaidah, Amir ibn al-Jarrah met him uh, on his way back. And there was a plague in that land. And Abu Ubaidah said to him, I have just come from Syria and there is a plague. People are dying. This is a plague that is called the Ta'un of Amwas in the 18th year of the Hijrah. In the 18th year of the Hijrah, there was a massive plague that killed over a thousand Sahaba. And that is why to this day, all across Jordan, all across Palestine, there are graves of the Sahaba, most of them from the plague in this year. So there was a massive yani, plague and you know, the people dying and whatnot. So Abu Ubaidah comes back and says that there is a, a plague over there and you're going in. Why are you going in? So Umar ibn Khattab said, call for me the Muhajirun. So all the Muhajirun uh, came. And he asked them, what do you think we should do? And they differed amongst themselves. Some of them said, we came for a purpose to fight the Romans, we should go in. And the other said, no, we outside, let's go back over there. And he then said that, okay, you guys leave, call the Ansar. So he called the Ansar, and the Ansar as well divided amongst themselves. They couldn't unite. Each one is, half is saying go, half is saying come back. So he said, okay, you guys go. Then he said, bring for me the elders of the Quraysh from those who migrated from before the Fatah, the Krem de la Krem. Bring me the senior of the Sahaba. Bring me the Muhajirun of the original before the conquest and the elders amongst them. So then a small group came and all of them agreed that they should not enter the land. All of them agreed that we should go back. And so Umar ibn al-Khattab then announced to the people that uh, we will be returning after Salat al-Dhuhr. After Salat al-Dhuhr, we're going to pray and then we're going to go back to it. We're not going to enter the land. The plague is in the land. We haven't come there. We're going to go back. Abu Ubaidah became frustrated. He said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, that are you running away from the Qadr of Allah? This is a famous, famous phrase. Are you running away from the Qadr of Allah? He res responded, we are running from the Qadr of Allah to the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is all Allah's Qadr. Okay, we are running from the Qadr of Allah to the Qadr of Allah. And then he gave another example as well. Then Abdul Rahman ibn Auf was away on a journey or something. He came back and he said, I have something you should all hear. I heard the Prophet ﷺ say, the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. I heard the Prophet ﷺ say, if the plague comes in a land where you reside, do not exit fleeing from the plague. And if the plague comes in another land, do not enter that land. And so he brought an evidence that is explicit. And Umar al-Khattab thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being guided to the truth before he even heard the explicit evidence for this. Now, by the way, this incident is so profound. So many things can be derived. Of them, the true leader always does shura. Of them, no matter how great the Sahaba were, their opinions are not divine. All the Muhajirun are divided, all the Ansar are divided. Of them, yes, seniority and wisdom plays a role here. That's why I said, Mashikhatul Quraysh, the youngsters are very impetuous. Youngsters want to do things rashly, like the Battle of Uhud. And so when the youngsters are there, half of them are saying, let's go in, why are we running away? And as I said many times, Life teaches you what books and lectures will not teach you. Going through life 
will teach you what books and lectures will not and the impetuousness and rashness which is a common trait of youth not just of muslim of all youth it tempers down you get wisdom so the elder said we're not there the problems over there why can't we go as use common sense and then the evidence arrives and the evidence is quite explicit in this regard so from these evidences pretty much all the ummah is pretty much yani, clear in this ibn hajar summarizes it and he says that uh that uh, the one who leaves a plague-infested town running away from the plague, this is sinful in the eyes of Allah. That it is haram if the plague infects your town and you leave because you are scared of the plague. Then he says, and there is ikhtilaf if you already had a journey planned and you're going for another reason. There is ikhtilaf and it goes back to your niyyah. Any calamity, especially a plague, is a punishment to some and a mercy to others. This is very clear. It is incorrect to extrapolate and say this is a punishment to everybody. Because the hadith is very clear. Also, a punishment for sins to certain people, no problem. But for anyone else to specify because of this sin, how do you know? You are now speaking on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not specify. We are very, very irritated and angry at what is happening to our Uyghur brothers and sisters. We know that that government is a tyrannical government. We know that it is now going down a path of Nazi fascism. Since World War II, no, since World War II, we have not seen this large scale concentration camps as we now see in the East Turkestan uh, province. And it is very ironic that we are currently celebrating the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz and Dachau. It is very, very ironic that our government just gave $10 million to never again. It is bitterly ironic that our president is standing with the president of Israel, giving more and more concessions to the, to the Israelis against the Palestinians, all the time saying, never again, we're never going to allow this to happen. We've learned our lesson. And right under our noses, the whole world knows what is going on in China and even what is going on to the Palestinians. So we have to say very clearly that it appears there seems to be two justice systems and two different rules by how people are judged and not all bloods are equal in their eyes this seems very clear as well nonetheless our anger at the chinese government and what it is doing does not allow us to go beyond what is right allah says in the quran this is explicit do not allow the hatred of a group of people to cause you to act unjust Act justly even with your enemies. That is the essence of taqwa. This is in the Quran. We are angry at what the government is doing, yet we do not say that the whole city of Wuhan has been put under threat of Allah and punishment of Allah because of this. How do we know? By the way, maybe it is, but maybe not. It's not my business to say. All that we can say, any calamity could be a means of punishment. And yes, when a sin is public, then generally speaking you know the there is it is true generically speaking that it is possible that allah's adab comes but we never generalize to everybody because there are innocent people there and there are people that have nothing to do with the crime and we cannot just say all of them are evil and going to jahannam it's not their fault what is going on this is the opportunity to in this dunya be compassionate send any aid if possible and in a religious perspective give da'wah and there are muslims in that city by the way there are graduate students studying in that city there are local chinese muslims in that city as well it's not as if we have to strip ourselves of our complete humanity there are people that are suffering that don't deserve to suffer and it will be inshallah ta'ala a means of rahma for them it is not adab for them there are people upon whom this is not adab but rather a rahma so we do not generalize and say that all of them are suffering and also there's an element that i saw myself very clearly online some muslims seem to be happy that this is happening and we do not take happiness in the pain and suffering of innocent people these people were not the ones who put the muslims in prison these people are average human beings would you like it and by the way the same justification is used when 
this country is attacked by the crazies, by the radicals. And they say, all you guys are guilty. All you guys are evil. They use the same justification. We don't like it then. No, not everybody is guilty. We live in this land. We can speak. So then why are we applying it over there? Why are we having a double standard? We know the reality that our government can do some very evil things, but not all the people are evil. We know this reality. These are innocent people, even if they're non-Muslim. We ask Allah to guide them, but we don't gloat at a tragedy happening to them. And there are also Muslims over there. So the bottom line, yes, it is true. Allah says in the Quran, any evil that happens to you is because of what you have done. But then what does Allah say? وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٌ Allah can also forgive because of this. Now is the time to be compassionate, to help them out and to give them da'wah as well. The turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who do so, this will be a means of rahmah for them, not a means of adab. And with that, inshaAllah ta'ala, we conclude for today.